there is a sort of tension um, when people talk about basic income. On on one hand, people saying that well, the, we can put this in and, and create more prosperity for people, and that that would seem to be at odds with the idea that the basic income is um, intended to allow us to sort of degrow or shrink the economy as if we need to to protect the environment. You know, can you reconcile these two things? And you know, I would say maybe in a normal economy. Um, you can't. Maybe more consumption uses up more resources, and that's sort of there. You have to balance these two competing things. But learning about basic income, specifically that that it is possible, and two that we don't have one today, and haven't had one since we began industrialization. Um, I've sort of come to to feel that we don't live in a normal economy, and we actually um, that that gives us a puts us in a unique position to to save on. A, a lot of resources that, that we don't need to be using um, while actually gaining more prosperity for people. So you can, it's kind of a have your cake and eat it too situation, or at least the, if, if this view that I'm um, talking about is correct. You know, I guess the question we can ask is just that if, if we imagine an economy that actually really is working, working as efficiently as possible to make everyone more prosperous, to actually just deliver uh, better and happier and, and more abundant lives to, to people, and that was the, the point of the economy, would that economy be causing um, the horrible ecological problems that we see today? My, my suspicion is that no. My suspicion is that a lot of the problems that we have stem are related to the fact that we, we, uh, we don't really have a prosperity first economy. We have a workaholic economy. And we sort of think that keeping people busy is sort of the most important thing. And we're terrified of the idea that people will be useless or that people or that robots will take our jobs. We're sort of a terrified of just maybe slowing down and enjoying life. On the question of degrowth, um, my tentative judgment is yes, we need something like that, but I wonder whether we should be foregrounding that as our, our slogan, so to speak. Um, Robert Poland, who's kind of in the green growth camp, made the observation that uh, if we wanted to contract the global world uh, the global world product by 10% over 20 years, which would be about four times the contraction of the economic crisis in 2007 to 2009, um, that would by itself reduce carbon emissions by exactly 10%, just a small fraction of what needs to be done. So degrowth by itself um, isn't going to do very much unless we have massive investments in alternative energy and we motivate the shift from carbon fuels to renewables. Um, so I think that's what ought to be put in the foreground. And if in the process of doing that, we are also um, in effect degrowing the economy, um, so be it. Um, the third thing I just wanted to pick up on um, Derek's remark that we don't live in a normal economy. We live in an economy that's been around and, and premised on growth for at most about 300 years. And in fact, the idea that we have to keep growing GDP, that's only a few decades old, that idea. Another dimension of this is Thomas Piketty's uh, study of growth and inequality and his finding that as economies slow down, as, it, as the growth rate slows, the inequality soars. So we have built-in tendencies toward inequality. Um, and if we try to slow down the economy for environmental reasons, we're gonna push toward that impetus toward inequality. And interestingly, basic income may be relevant to both of those problems because if we try to increase the basic income to as high a level as we can, we're redistributing wealth, we're, we're increasing tax rates on the rich, we're lowering the inequality, we're reducing the positional goods. Um, and at the same time, if part of the funding that's feeding into this is pollution taxes, we're also increasing the incentives to stop, stop polluting. And we enable people to live well, and we, don't, are, we are not relying on a growing economy to generate employment, which has been the standard model for dealing with poverty and inequality since the end of the Second World War. You keep the economy growing and everything trickles down. And 
that's that's been faltering for reasons independent of in, of the environment. It's time we recognize that we need to think of another way to deal with inequality, and it has more to do with redistribution. And I like what you said about full employment. How we kind of Uh, conventionally rely on this mechanism of people getting their money through jobs, growth creating jobs in kind of this this cycle. And it doesn't necessarily need to be that way, uh, especially in a basic income world. And if we think of labor as a resource, if we think of people's time as a scarce resource, then full employment is like going into a forest and saying, hey, look at all these trees. Let's chop, let's chop them all down and figure out what to do with them, right? Uh, we, we have this resource. We want to use use it completely and then figure out what to do with it. And then that's that's kind of what um, what full employment policies are like. And that's what a job guarantee is like too. You're saying, hey, people have this available time. We want to employ them in some way. Now, that's not to say, you know, Kate was saying earlier that there are plenty of useful jobs that maybe the government should be hiring people to do. But I think that's very different from a job guarantee. I think if there's there's jobs that need doing, you recognize that employing people is a cost that uses resources and it, and it takes up people's time. Uh, and there's an opportunity cost. How, how else would they have spent, been spending their time if you hadn't employed them, that kind of thing. So you recognize the cost and you recognize the benefit of the product of the labor. And that might be uh, doing important things for the environment, that kind of thing. And then you say, is it worth it to create these jobs? Is it worth it to pull people away from what they otherwise, uh, what they otherwise would have been doing?